What's up, nerds? Uh, we're your hosts this week. I'm Jake. I'm Chad. This week we are sponsored by Crybaby Craig's Hot Sauce. This week we're also sponsored by Ray's Energy Drink. Uh, this week we're going to be talking about Loki Episode 5. Then we're also going to be talking about Black Widow because it finally came out. Uh, so we're going to be talking about that as well. Uh, so let's get into it. Um, this is the All Things Ed podcast. <laughs> All right, welcome back, you nerds, to another week of the All Things Nerd podcast, your weekly dive into, you know, All Things Nerd. It's kind of in the name. No. Uh, but yeah, Jake, uh, how have you been this week? This week's been bittersweet because it was a short week, which is the sweet part about it, uh, but it was bitter because not a whole lot of <laughs> shit happened this week. I didn't, I didn't. I worked for four days. I like how you I, hesitated yeah. to not say a certain swear word and then said a different swear word instead. <laughs> like, not censoring at all. Just being like, Ugh, I don't want to say fuck. Fuck. Shit. How about uh, you? No, see, it was, uh, you know, bittersweet. It was a short work week, and so that was sweet. Uh, but not a lot of uh, shit happened. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> not no. a lot of fuck. Yeah, I mean, fuck. Not, not a lot. Uh, <laughs> yeah, nothing. <laughs> and there goes our mothers from the episode. <laughs> the second we hit the three fuck words, they're done. Well, uh, I think that if not a lot of fucking shit happened this week, then no, we it, should. Yeah. We got. We have a lot to talk about <clears throat> this week, and uh, we want to try and keep this episode closer to an hour. Last week was a little longer than yeah, we wanted to be. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. Yeah. So. Uh, Fuck the banter this week. We're gonna get into sponsor number one. Uh, so listen Which up. Is? We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna introduce. Huh? Uh, cra- huh? I'm, just huh? I'm fucking with you. Just tell us about the sponsor. I'm just can, messing with you. I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, I can hear okay, you. Jake. Okay, Jake. Okay, Jake. With you. Okay. Okay, Jake. Are you okay? Okay, Jake. Are you okay? Jake, okay. Tell me, are you okay? Well, my name's not Annie, so it doesn't really matter if I'm okay. <laughs> Uh, fucking A, shut up. Uh, <laughs> our, our, our first sponsor is uh, Crybaby Craig's Hot Sauce. It's uh, pickled habanero and garlic hot sauce. Goes on fucking everything. It's super good. Go get it. Yeah, listen Get up. it. Go get it. Get it. Mm. Hey, you nerds. Do you love spice? Supporting small businesses? What about enhancing the flavor of your favorite foods? If you said yes to any of those, our good friends over at Crybaby Craig's have the perfect solution for you. Crybaby Craig's is a pickled habanero and garlic hot sauce that goes perfectly with your favorite foods, adding the perfect amount of spice and enhancing the flavor of everything it touches. Started in Minneapolis by Craig back in 2012, Crybaby Craig's has become a Minneapolis and Minnesota staple in the sauce world. So head over to crybabycraigs.com and order yours today. All right, guys. So uh, this week we're going to be talking about uh, Loki Episode 5, which is kind of the, of the Loki series so far, is kind of like the comic nerd's haven. There are so many Easter eggs that we're going to get into. It On top insane. of it just being a really good episode, like yeah. the entire yeah. show has been. Uh, but, yeah, the the whole show has been the best Marvel show so far. Yes, in my in my opinion. I, oh, I absolutely love this show, and I would definitely agree. <clears throat> and they've also had the most like nods to fans without like just throwing fanfare in there to to fuck with you, <clears throat> Mephisto. <ugh. laughs> uh, Shut and the and fuck we up. will get to that later too. <laughs> We're gonna get into that, uh, yeah. <clears throat> but no, just this show has had a, a lot of really great nods to comic fans, and this episode was no different. And by no different, I mean it had so many Easter eggs that were just great. Uh, but before we get into the Easter eggs, 
Uh, actually, yeah. Let's start with the Easter eggs before we get just into Just jump into the Easter eggs? Yeah, let's just do it. Cool. Uh, one thing that I never thought that we would ever see in the MCU is the Thanos chopper. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, we wrote these down opposite. That's right. That's right. That's yeah, right. the super cheesy Thanos yeah. chopper. Yeah. Uh, and we literally see a version of the Thanos chopper just like crashed in the void that happens yeah. at the after the end of time. Um, which is where most of this episode takes place. Yeah. So spoilers, we're, we're, if you guys haven't seen this, yeah. I mean, sorry, you see the yeah. Thanos chopper for no reason. Yeah. Um, but, tune out and then yeah. tune back in if you haven't seen the episode five yet. But also, you've had a week, so like, again, what are you doing? Get on it. Besides being responsible as an adult. Uh, yeah. But uh, so where we left last week, we see Loki wakes up and there is a bunch of different versions of Loki around him. Yeah. And that's all I'm going to say about it. Uh, but that's just to add context to where you are. He's in the void with different versions of himself. And we get like a million fucking yeah. th- like Be- Easter eggs. Because to... when you get pruned from the TVA, mm-hmm. they don't just delete you. They you basically just send you to... Hell, uh, H-E-L. Well, yeah, kind of, it basically is. But they send yeah. you to the, the, wor- the world after time ends after and it's constantly yeah, being like it, destroyed and rewritten mm. so you have to like stay on the run basically yeah yeah it's the end of the world but there's no there's nothing after that point yeah yeah <clears throat> so he wakes up there blah 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 uh anyways chad was saying we saw the thanos chopper uh we also see fucking Throg, Thorog. Uh, technically, it's Thorog, not Throg, like I thought it was, but it's mm. Thorog. But and it's basically a fr- it, in the comics, it's a version of like a Thor, basically that got turned into a frog by a witch. Uh, and it, it's you see like Mjolnir, and then you see a jar with Throg in it, like trying to get to. On there. <laughs> you actually hear him like grunting and chanting. Yeah. So I didn't notice it the first time that we watched it. Uh, but when I rewatched it, uh, there was, you know, it's Thor, Rog, Thorog, whatever. Um, and But you hear it sounds like Chris Hemsworth being like, Ugh, oh, I can't get it. Oh, as he's like jumping against the glass because he's trapped in a yeah. fucking like jam mason jar. Mason jar. Yeah, yeah. mason jar. I very Nicole and I watched it and I yelled at the TV. I was like, "This dog!" <laughs> <laughs> and it's hilarious. Yeah. It, but on top of that, we also get Crokey. Yep. Which is a crocodile version of Loki. But it's also funny because in the episode they do say that we don't actually know if this is a variation of Loki. And or he's just, just like playing the long con, yeah. and then Mobius, who by yeah. the way is not dead either, yeah. uh, spoiler, uh, <laughs> is like, but does that make him more of a Loki? <laughs> like, yeah, he, so he, like he like questions his cool question. All of you, yeah, it's sweet. It's um, hilarious. We all. What else do we see, Chad? We see a giant helmet from uh, Darren Cross, aka Yellow Jacket. Yellow Jacket, yeah, who yeah. is uh, rumored. I don't know if it's been officially confirmed uh, to appear in the next Ant-Man film in Ant-Man yep. 3 Quantumania. Which could be tied to this movie because we don't, or this show, it feels like a movie, uh, because we don't know what the city is. I don't want to go there yet, but there's a city mm-hmm. in this episode and we don't know what that city is yet. It, well, it's where the TVA is, but it kind of resembles... I mean, we talked about it briefly. Last week, yeah. Yeah, it kind of resembles the the city that I see in the background of, I think, Ant-Man and the Wasp. When he goes into the quantum realm, there looks to be a city in the, in the yeah. background in the quantum realm. <sighs> which also makes sense for how they can, you know, more easily transverse the... The multiverse, the the different timelines, as oh. well as I don't know if you've noticed this, Jake, because we didn't talk about this, but there 
uh, reset canisters that they used to like reset timelines. Yeah, so much like the canister that I saw Ant Man opens it. Mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. Quantum, uh, or not Quantum Mania, uh, Ant Man the too. Wasp. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, we also got a fucking the Dark Aster from Guardians of the Galaxy is there, uh, yeah, basically it's... in like the way desert wasteland of this fucking place at the void yeah. we'll call it the void um the dark aster from that was uh what the fuck was his name oh goodness oh god uh i know that as the shit oh That's it was so... ronin ronin thank you ronin ronin's ship uh the yeah. dark aster i was trying to think of the actor's name uh because he was also in the hobbit yeah uh, he was the legolas's guy. father yeah. oh uh, but yeah, the Dark Aster, the ship that he had in Guardians of the Galaxy number one, is as crashed. well as we yeah. see it in uh, Captain Marvel. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's well, crashed there. We also see it like a helicarrier. Yeah, that's crashed. That's another one. We see like a UFO. Yeah, the UFO was probably my favorite. It was so it random. There's no like context to it. It was just like a cool like. Same with like the pirate ship, and then we get the like pirate... the World War there II is battleship. Something to the pirate ship, uh, and dude, the battleship. Oh my god! Oh my god! We have to talk about this. I read this, and I did not tell you about this. Uh, so the battleship that shows up there, the name on the battleship, which I forget off the top of my head because I did not look it up because I did not realize I was going to be talking about it in this episode. So you fucked but up. Cool. It's a it's a real ship that went missing during like world war two and I, it was i did see that it was rumored that it like either From ended up in a different, triangle yeah it ended up in like a different dimension or like it went somewhere but everybody on the ship and the ship itself completely disappeared uh and so this kind of like brings it to life a little bit like it, this is where it went yeah it gives it it's some cool. like i real, totally forgot real about world that. oh my god I did too because you actually sent me that video and I can't remember. Yeah. What, is it, oh, oh my goodness! It it's Let's like at it the up. tip of my tongue. Yeah, look it up. I want to say it's like the USS. No, it's not the USS Idaho because why would they have a battleship named after <laughs> Idaho? But it's something along those lines, where it's like a lesser known battleship and it's a World War II ship. It might be Korean War, like forties or fifties. USS eldridge eldridge wow that has nothing to do with idaho um, uh the philadelphia experiment is what was called but it uh, didn't did it not go in real life did they not lose track of it in yeah the it completely triangle? disappeared yeah I, I don't know if it was bermuda triangle but yeah this was like a big conspiracy theory like yeah, and then they kind of just poke at it a little bit in Loki. And yeah. by a little bit, a lot of it. Yeah, because so it's one it of was... those things that we see appear. <clears throat> I'm going to read what it says on here. It's only like four sentences, so it's not... No, I'm just yeah. kidding. Go for it. In an attempt to distract the Eliath beast that patrols the void in Episode 5, Loki and his variants wait for a big enough event to distract the beast. This comes in the form of the USS Eldridge, a ship famous for allegedly becoming invisible to enemy devices. It's known as the Philadelphia Experiment. It doesn't say anything more than that about the ship, but I do promise that the ship that was supposed to be invisible to uh, enemies completely disappeared. The crew, the ship, everything. Nobody knows where it went. And so this kind of pokes... Not fun. It's not making fun of the ship. It just pokes at it a little bit. It just like, it, and it just yeah. kind of like just brings it into the MCU. Kind of like the cool... whole DB Cooper. I D, and yeah, DB yeah. Cooper. DB Cooper. Uh, and I didn't realize it was anything like when I watched when, when I. I watched the episode and then I read about it. No, so this isn't like even something that I knew. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. This is the ship. I read it somewhere. Credit to whoever I read it from. I'm sorry, I don't know yeah, where I read thing. it, but. Yeah. yeah, credit to them. Uh, <laughs> no, but the, it's it's just a fun way to like it was cool. bring some like recenter this entire show that's based on a multiverse into what we know as reality. Which is why we see UFOs, ships from 
Earth. Uh, yeah, we the see dark old Aster. Clipper ships. We also see uh, a severed head from a statue, which is the Living Tribunal, uh, which is, yeah. yeah, you know, from the comics, it's a three-faced person with a cloak over their head. Um, I knew, I didn't know when I saw it. I recognized it and I was like, that's fucking something. Yeah. I got, I got to look it up, but cause I <clears throat> recognized it from a comic, but, uh, yeah, the living tribu- tribunal, the tribunal, tribunal, tribunal. Um, uh, but also one of the biggest things was we kind of touched base on it last week was the, the old Stark tower, or old Avengers tower hmm. that is seen in the background. We get a better view of it this week, and uh, it no longer says Stark or has the Avengers A on the side of it. Instead, it says uh, it has the letters Q E N G. Oh, it sounds like like Kang. K- Kang. Yeah, it's weird. It's so weird. Um, but what's fantastic about that is that in the comics, Tony Stark sells. Avengers Tower to Kang Industries and the CEO of Kang Industries is legitimately Kang the Conqueror in disguise as a human as a human yeah and uh first off wild like that that's yeah. a that was an We Easter also egg. also but also Chad and I believe that the fuck is happening i don't know your face like was doing like some demon shit like <laughs> <laughs> i was nodding slowly. no it was, it was like the ca- the camera was like doing it you know like you oh. know when you see a demon in a movie and it's like all twitchy and shit like that's like oh. what your face was doing and i was like holy fuck what are you doing gross, uh, gross. We, Ch- chad and i had a theory that um oh my god where were we I lost Kang. my spot. Kang. Kang Industries turning into Kang be a real person. In some of the comic book uh, storylines, the person that's in charge of Kang Industries is Norman Richards. Not yeah. in all of them. Some of them, it's a different guy. I can't think of his name right now, but the big one that stuck Say out to me. Say who that is. Well, Norman Richards is the father of Reed Richards, <clears throat> a.k.a. the Fantastic Four which has been confirmed to be a part of Phase 4 of the MCU. Yeah. That's what's going to wrap up Phase 4. Yeah. So it could be a nod to that. It could be just a fan nod to the comics. Uh, We might be getting Mephisto'd right up the butt. That's what I was going to fucking say. That... This is, it's very possible, because that's what I have next written down on here, <laughs> was that it's very possible that uh, in this episode, we get introduced to uh, Richard E. Grant's character, which is Old Man Loki, which is, his costume is the costume that Loki classic was originally, classic, yeah, he was originally introduced in this green and yellow, goofy ass suit, and yeah, that's like this a jester. Guy. yeah. <laughs> So that's uh, that's his character, and in the episode, he says to our Loki and like the other Lokis that are in the room that because Loki basically says Thanos kills us. That's it. He snaps our neck, and that's it. And uh, Richard Grant's character, Loki, old man Loki, we're gonna call him old man Loki, says I created a uh, projection, al- an illusion. Uh, yeah, yeah, a projection so believable. That even the Mad Titan himself, aka Thanos, did not notice that it was fake. And I ran away and I hid. And it wasn't until I came out of hiding because I missed my brother, aka Thor, that the TVA caught me. Um, later in the episode, we see him helping Loki and Sylvie because their idea is to basically try to enchant uh, Eliath, which is the big smoky creature. Um, and he creates this crazy illusion of Asgard to distract the creature, uh, Eliath, and Eliath basically kills kills him. Finger quoting for those of you who are we listening don't see and not a body. watching. 
Uh, And I, I, Chad and I disagree on this a little bit. I think that old man Loki is going to be the bad guy that, cause I think they're Mephistoing us in this. We know we're saying it Mephisto. We're saying they're fisting us cause they're fucking us. Uh, <laughs> Mephisto. Uh, but they Mephistoed us and fucked us because they fucked us out of Mephisto. Um, and I think they're doing that again. I think that they're pointing all the fingers at Kang, but they're not going to give us Kang. I, I know for a fact because he's confirmed in Quantumania that he is behind all of this. I know that. But I don't think they're going to give us Kang in the Loki series. I would love it to be like an after credit scene. I don't know if that's going to happen, obviously. Yeah. Um, but I think that old man Loki is behind all of this. And I think that the illusion and the fact that he is so good at creating illusions... Uh, he faked his own death uh, to basically throw them off his trail. And Chad disagrees with me, and you can spew your so bullshit. So my, my disagreement with that is that w- by him casting the projection of Asgard around him to distract uh, Aviath. Aliath. Aliath, sorry. I keep saying that because like I want to say Leviathan, Leviathan, you know, the giant lobster god. Um from I don't know just the bible hmm. <laughs> another <Loki>. comic book <laughs> <laughs> it's more of a graphic novel really <laughs> um, sorry mom sorry, um, but so <laughs> so Eliath uh in in the comics, Eliath is starts off as a foe to Kang, and he basically conquers him and then makes him his guard dog, his pet. Yeah, his bitch. Yeah. Um, but so with Old Man Loki, if he was trying to distract Loki and Sylvie to be like, I'm not actually the big bad. <laughs> Why would he help them? Why would he do something that gave them access to find out the truth? Because they so, were going to get that anyway. They weren't. They were on the verge of losing until he showed up. So what I'm, what I'm thinking is that uh, the first... I think that Richard E. Grant very well could play an old man Loki that is actually he who remains, um, or a version of he who remains who is behind the TVA. But I think that the... The Richard E. Grant that we met was a variant of him. We'll find out. Which would mean that there is, because basically he said he went into hiding and then he got sad and missed his brother. And the second he tried to find Thor is when he was picked up by the TVA, which means that maybe he was supposed to go into hiding and that the old man Loki that is actually behind everything could still be Richard E. Grant, but not the one that we saw in this episode because he was picked up by the TVA, which means that the TVA knew to look for him. So the one that went hiding until the end of time could be the one that's in charge of everything. So it could be another variant of Loki, which is kind of like a running theory is that there's like a Loki because of certain comic book stories uh, and timelines that that fit that narrative. But I don't think it was the Richard E. Grant that projected a, a fake Asgard to distract. We'll see. Yeah, I we will. And I would still love to get Kang in some form, but uh, I think that we are going to get uh, Mephisto'd right up the butt. Yeah. Because um, Kang, is, Kang, Kang is a Thanos-level bad guy in the comics. Yeah, I don't think I think they're gonna, and so is Mephisto as well. I so I think that we're getting, um, they're just gonna point the fingers to them, just to like let us, basically like let us know like who's behind it, kind of who's coming, but sort of thing. But that's gonna be like the big bad in Phase Four, in my opinion. Yeah, um, a couple one of the, a very sweet moments in this mm. episode is uh loki and mobius uh mobius is not dead and 
Uh, because Loki is not dead. And Loki and Mobius get reunited and it feels so good. And they hug it out. It's beautiful. They cry. They touch each other. It's great. Yeah, so before but before that, basically the the last episode ends with Sylvie uh facing Ravana and being like, You're gonna tell me everything. And Ravana basically stalls the entire time. How did time. we leave that part out? <laughs> uh <laughs> How Sylvie got there, by the way. Thanos copter. <laughs> Thanos copter. That was so distracting as it is. Uh, basically, Sylvie uh, is trying to get Ravana to tell her the truth. Ravana stalls. Sylvie catches on. She prunes herself after stealing Ravana's uh, temp pad so that she has a way back, back after she knows that when you get pruned, you don't die. <clears throat> That's as much as I want to go into it because it's still kind of like up in the air. Ravana clearly knows more than what she's letting on, but she doesn't give any real information except for yeah. the fact that when you get pruned, you get put into what they call the void, which is after the end of time. It's kind of like purgatory. Yeah. 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 Only everyone who ends up there, except for Lokis and these weird uh, hovering headed peacocks, everybody <laughs> else goes to hell. Dude, those things are so weird. What the Nicole, hell is going dude, on? <laughs> Nicole was like, oh my god, they're so cute. I want one. And I was like, what? It's like a tube with like a golf ball like floating it's above a, it. It's like, a peacock with one of those like hovering Bluetooth speakers <laughs> yeah. for a head. That's what it is. Yeah. But so Sylvie prunes herself. She ends up there. There's some speculation as to Easter eggs about when she gets to the void. I don't think that they actually mean anything. I, think, I, think, so I think it's stretching. It's kind of like how uh, Peter Parker farts once, and everyone's like, "Oh my god, multiverse!" Uh, I like to call it gaping, not stretching. But yeah, well, I mean, yeah, because then when you take your hands out, it stays. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, mom. Oh. oh, sorry. God, that was gross. I'm, just, I'm actually not sorry. You know what, uh, mom? You you know oh, you Tracy. know what you raised. <laughs> <laughs> it's your fault, Tracy. It's not. Um, uh. Uh, also, so oh but yeah. Back so, to Mobius yeah, and yeah, Loki Mobius. having a, a really tender moment. Uh, Loki gives Mobius the the temp pad. He's like, "I'm gonna stay here with Sylvie to to try and enchant this." They have a really awkward first date moment with a really lightweight yeah. blanket, and she's like, "What is this? A tablecloth?" And he's like, "No, it's a blanket." And then she's like, mm, "Thanks." Mm. And then they kind of like snuggle a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, for those of you that did not see what just happened, I'm not going to explain it. You don't need to it. know. I'm you not going to. to know. I'll just follow us on YouTube. <laughs> subscribe to that channel. Um, but Mobius uh, is about to leave, and he puts his hand out and is like, well, Loki, I guess you escaped after all. And Loki like looks at his hand, looks at Mobius, and he's like, no. And he hugs Mobius to an astounding, wow. <laughs> um, I'm just kidding. We don't get it a while in this episode, but he hugs Mobius and he's like, "Thank you, my friend." Yeah, and it's a it really a touching moment. Yeah, it's a really yeah. touching. But moment. then, what does what does Mobius say though? While he's hugging him, he says, "You're my favorite," but he is looking Sylvie dead in the eyes, like you're so, my favorite Loki. So Loki hears it and thinks he's saying it to him, but really he's saying it to her. Uh, we also do get very briefly. I I just want to say this that we w may not, and uh, it's been confirmed that we will not get the wow, wow from uh, Owen Wilson. But we did get a very Owen Wilson like sounding. They're like they're like, what are you gonna do when you get back to the TVA? And he goes, I'm gonna burn it to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. I loved it. Yeah, that was a terrible impression. <laughs> I'm not an impressionist. I'm sorry, but yeah, do better. Um, <laughs> but so the episode ends with Sylvie and Loki holding hands and he's like she's like I need you to help me enchant Eliath and he's like I can't she's like yes you can you're a Loki they enchant it it opens up there's a castle in the sky 
I don't want to get into it this episode because we have no idea what it actually means. Yeah. We kind of already touched that it could mean like 16,000 different yeah. things. I, you go, sorry. But that's how the episode ends. There's no end credit scenes. There, yeah, no, unfortunately. There is one last thing I want to talk about this and we'll get into sponsor too. Uh, I, this is a personal thing that I was like, holy shit. And I mentioned it to my girlfriend when we were watching it that uh, this is this version of Loki is not the same Loki that was. I mean, he started out as an asshole, but he also all of the Lokis that we've seen so far do end up becoming a hero. And in this version of him, he, not all of them, because I mean, there's yeah. the brute one with the hammer and well, no, 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 no. Loki not, and all those not, not the variants. I mean, our Lokis. Oh, like yeah. eventually in you know the end game, he becomes a hero, uh, but dies. Infinity War, yeah. Yeah, and then in this one, he also, uh, in my personal opinion, this isn't something that is, like, unanimously, like, everyone's like, oh, my God. But uh, there's a part where Kid Loki uh, gives our Loki his sword, and he's like, hey, like, you're going to need this. And Loki, like, fashions himself, like, a thing to put it in. A shoulder strap sheath. And he puts the sword, like in the back of it and i was like and they play like some you know music like uplifting music and i was like he's I, he's becoming a hero instead of like this is his like that his version of loki is becoming a good guy this is where it's happening and yeah i thought it was cool um just for those of you that have not we're going to talk about it a little bit more uh, at the end of the the episode uh, we do put out some bonus content on our Patreon, or we're starting to. And uh, there's one thing very particular to this episode that I'm going to talk about after we're done recording about this episode. That is a huge Easter egg uh, to play into uh, the Sylvie storyline that will only be available to our Patreons. So keep listening. You'll hear how to join our Patreon, and we'll go from there. But... We've spent a lot of time on this. We're trying not to repeat last week where we went, uh, you know, an hour and a half into our episode when we try and keep them to like an hour, an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, So we're going to talk about our second sponsor before we talk about uh, Black Widow. Uh, And our second sponsor this week is Ray's Energy Drinks. They're kind of our uh, title sponsor uh, since we've started uh, but yeah, check out uh, Ray's Energy Drinks. It's fantastic energy drinks with uh, zero calorie, uh, zero sugar, and zero crash. Yeah. Uh, but check them out. What's up, nerds? I wanted to take a minute and talk to you about Ray's Energy, an incredible energy drink that provides max energy with zero crash. Ray's Energy takes a giant leap of faith with instilling a high-quality formula to bring a powerful yet sustained energy energetic experience to help you push your workouts and focus to the next level perfect for anyone at any time empowered by their refresh formula technology raise energy delivers a performance enhancing energy drink that aids in multiple different categories that include targeted focus better recovery time improved clean energy levels and a boost in stamina and hydration but most importantly Every can of Ray's Energy has absolutely zero calories, zero sugar, and zero carbohydrates to give you a smarter and healthier option. So don't settle for an energy drink that contains more sugar and carbohydrates than you can count. Instead, head over to repsports.com. That's R-E-P-P-S-P-O-R-T-S dot com and use the promo code NERDPODCAST at checkout for 15% off your order. Or if you don't know what you want, go ahead and click the link that's in the description for, to get a $50 sample pack for free. All you do is you cover the cost of shipping. Again, make sure you use promo code NERDPODCAST at checkout to let them know that we sent you. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> Fuck you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm keeping that in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, to... The second part of our episode is going to be talking about uh, Black Widow, which came out on Friday. Um, this is what we were supposed to get it a while back. Um, yeah, but, like a year but, ago. Yeah. Um, but no. The, global pandemic. <laughs> the big thing that I personally took from this movie, and I 
I want to start off by saying it's it's fun. It's enjoyable. I enjoyed watching this movie. It's a great movie. But there was something was bothering me about this movie. And while I was in the shower this morning, (laughs) it it literally hit me like mid shampoo. And I was like, holy fucking shit. And I told Nicole about it at lunch. First shampoo or was it this was this after the rinse and repeat? No. I don't do that bullshit. Come on. Really? You have glorious hair. I would assume you follow the directions. <laughs> I do not. Uh, wow. But I told my girlfriend about it at lunch, and I'm like, hey, uh, so this is kind of like what I think about it. And she was like, oh, my God. And so this is what I think. And then, oh. Yeah. So <laughs> this movie is X-Men 2. It, it is so X-Men 2 that, yeah, give me that look for a second, but let me explain. No, uh, no, the the fuck what? <laughs> yeah, in X Men Two, the main bad guy who is William Stryker uses another mutant to control <clears throat> other mutants. That's his whole end. Like, that's his goal. In this movie, mm-hmm. the main bad guy uses whatever the fuck he's using to control all the women of the uh, assassins or whatever. Uh. And then on top of that, it's a level of mind control. It's not a mutant, though. Yeah, I know it's not. But I'm just saying he's used. It's literally the <laughs> same thing, and it's on top of that. The fucking, first off, it, before we get any further, if you guys haven't watched Black Widow yet, yeah, I'm fucking this it, up. For it's you. only been a week, uh, but spoiler alert. Uh, so like. If you haven't seen it, pump the brakes. If you have seen it, continue. Yeah. That's all I want to see. Because we, yeah. we should have said it before Jake said anything. That's on both of us. But uh, it's X-Men 2, I guess. So it's Jake, X-Men 2. Explain. No, explain. William, okay, so in X2, William Stryker is trying to control the minds of mutants. In this movie, the bad guy... Uh, I forget his Russian name off the top. I've only seen the... Drekov. Seen it once. Yeah. It's trying to control the minds of the assassins. By the uh, way, Drekov just... is still alive. If yeah, you guys so care about I'm just gonna I'm just going to compare the parallels between the two movies. I'm not going to walk you through the whole thing. But yeah. uh, also, um, in, in X-Men, the mutant that Stryker is using is his own son. Uh, in this movie, the bad guy is using Taskmaster, which is his own daughter. Okay. Another spoiler. If you only yeah. got like halfway through the film. We already told you spoiler yeah. alert. If you're still listening, I don't care. It's a secondary okay. this is a secondary warning. If you got this <laughs> yeah. far and you haven't watched it, it's on you now. Then on top of that, in X Men Two, Stryker uses Cerebral, which is Professor Xavier's uh, way of communicating to all mutants, right? It's, it's a supercomputer, uh, yeah. That's it. Uh, in this movie, the bad guy uses a supercomputer to control all the fucking chicks, the, the assassins. Yeah. And it's, it's literally X Men 2. This movie is X Men 2. The action is better. The graphics are better because X2 was in, like, what, 2003 or something like that? Yeah. It was, like, 20 years ago. But (laughs) in this movie, this movie movie was great. I enjoyed it a lot. It was a lot of fun. Uh, But but it's X-Men 2. It's X-Men 2. The whole storyline is ripped off of X-Men 2, Mm. and I can't unsee it. Chad, I, I value your opinion, and now that you've heard this from me, what do you think? Am I crazy? I mean, you're not wrong. Well, okay. Am, I don't. I am crazy. I'm definitely crazy. But am I crazy in this instance? That that's why I just said you're not wrong <laughs> instead of saying you're crazy or not. Uh, you're just not wrong. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's the similarities, and, and those are like the big parts in the in the movie, and those are also the big parts in X Men. Like it's not. I'm not saying the whole movie is like ripped off of X Men. I'm saying that the the big the surprising premise. the big surprising parts and like the yeah the premise of the movie is like well I've seen this already. 
Where did I see this? And like, I had oh, like yeah. a revelation I saw it when in I was the 13. shower. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, hmm, this was X Men. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, Marvel. I love what you guys are doing, and I. I mean, I they they get... did it better. Yeah. And like this film is. So, for for those of you that are listening and watching, uh, it may sound like we're shitting on this movie. I love the movie. It was so good, and it was enjoyable. But there's a lot of things that irked us as comic book lovers. Yeah. Uh, and I. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so. Let's start on a positive. <laughs> Let's start on a high note. Uh, Florence Pugh. Pew. Pew pew. Finger guns. Uh, oh. For those of you who can't see what we just said. Was amazing. She was fucking the highlight of this movie. Oh my god. The right combination of serious, funny, and emotional. Although like, I did she, notice. She I didn't notice. killed the role. Nicole noticed. I didn't notice, but Nicole was like, you know, like she doesn't really have like any facial expressions, <laughs> and I was like paying attention to that. She really does not do anything. Her face is like the whole movie. Is that her or is that the role though? No, it's definitely the role because the re. Well, I thought I was gonna hate her in this movie because. The movie Midsummer, mm-hmm. I fucking hated her character so much, and this movie she was a delight. Good job, girl. She she was a delight. Yeah, she provided. She was the comic. Well, her and Red Guardian were the yeah, and comic relief, but she David was Harbor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I definitely laughed at her lines a lot in this movie. Uh, for she one, was like great. she like. She like hates her sister finger or not finger guns but quotations, uh, and she like they're like in a gas station. She's like, "Hey, why do you do this?" And she like does the black widow pose, like touching the ground, and she goes, "And you do this with your hair?" And she starts like flipping her hair around, and she's like, "And black widow's like whatever, like blah blah blah." And she goes, "You're a poser. You're you're a poser." And then, like, <laughs> la- later in the movie, like, Black Widow, like, does something and lands in that pose, and she goes, poser. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. But yeah, the best is, part she... is that later, later, later oh, in the yeah, film, yeah, yeah. Uh, Florence, uh, her you character, uh, yeah. y- Yelana. Yelana? Yelana. Y- Yelana. 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 Uh, bl- Oh my God! Don't don't try the last name. Mm, Just yeah. Yolana. It's too Russian um, <laughs> for uh, a Midwestern white dude. Um, but she does like a super awesome. She does it landing, she, and she like lands all. She does superhero Black landing. Superhero landing. Yeah, it's terrible on the knees. And she's like, and then she's Ugh. like, Ugh, that was that gross. Was gross. <laughs> fucking hilarious but yeah. she uh, was great she was mm, the story was not centered around her at all she stole the show for she sure. did and i can't wait and we'll we'll get to it but like the the movie set up for her to continue on in the mcu and it's as as potentially hopefully Black like Widow. like an, an Italian talking about how great the pizza dough is just oi oh yeah yeah <laughs> I don't I'm sorry for all the Italians out there um yeah it it was it was a good movie don't listen to our bashing of it and look no the it was fantastic and there it was fun some of the things that were there was we're gonna sh- we the, unfortunately the vest. Unfortu- the vest, yeah, oh go. So, uh, if you guys have seen Infinity War, uh, you know, my it's Scar- like cutting my back. Scarjo has this super awesome, uh, and if you're into fashion, super cute. Um, 
<laughs> I was trying to get Jake to spit his drink out, and I won. Um, I didn't spit it out. I almost spit it out. Uh, I heard some splatter back. Um, gross. Gross. Uh, That's your sorry mom. Yes. That's your sorry mom. Exactly. Sorry, mother. Um. No, but uh, she talks about how that's her uh, Florence Pugh or, uh, you know. Yelena. Yelena. Wow. Jesus how did I Christ forget that did. quickly? God damn. <laughs> um, she talks about how that's the first piece of, uh, first piece, first article of clothing that she's ever purchased for herself. And it, it has so many pockets. It's like a, it's like, a, like it's like a sundress at a wedding. Like she's like people are like, and she, oh, it's such a cute dress. I'm like, I know it has pockets. And she's and she's like, you like my vest, don't you? And she, and Scarjo's like, nah, I don't like it, your vest. And she goes, really? Because I have all these pockets, and you can put all this shit in it, and blah blah blah. And she's like, okay, I like your vest. And she's like, I knew you liked my vest. And then what happens? And then at the end of the film, uh, you know, Florence pew 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 pew. Uh, give Scarjo her vest, and that's Wait. that's the tactical vest that we see in Infinity War, yeah. and uh, pretty cool. Up until Scarjo's uh, demise, well, yeah. if you will. Mm. Oh, cast that off the one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, some other cool things that happen in the movie. I mean, um. Well, okay, so hold I mean, on. David cool Harbour. Things. Well, David Harbour was awesome. Uh, mm. I did want to, I feel bad because I don't want to shit on this movie, but there are a couple things that you and I talked about pre-recording. Does that it have we, to do with Taskmaster? That we, well, that and like the amount of blunt force trauma that happens in this movie with well, no repercussions. If, if you're a gamer... Uh, blunt force trauma translates to HP. <laughs> or if you're uh, a human and you know, know what blunt points. force trauma is. Like, if you've <laughs> ever tripped up or downstairs, you know what blunt force trauma is. <laughs> <laughs> it's this. I and I can't even take credit for noticing this because I. I mean, I did, but I didn't. My girlfriend noticed it, and she was like, "Well, this is kind of weird." And I was like, "Yep, <laughs> I'm gonna talk about that." Uh, Fucking one of the first things that we see is Scarjo fucking get knocked out of like a four story building and hit every fucking possible H-back. hard object on the way down, and then she lands on her feet and she's like, "I'm good." Now, with that no, being said, see, see falling like two stories and then hitting a metal object that that breaks up your your terminal velocity <laughs> so you can really survive yeah. it really well with yeah, just you just, it just minimal, slows you down on the way to the ground, you get right? minimal bruising that's that's about it you can walk away just fine uh not true. because that's what last science summer, says not true last summer i skateboarded home from the bar drunk i hit something a rock uh, maybe because you're on and, a skateboard and flew forward and i broke my rib i fell uh, about two feet onto the ground and broke my rib. This girl fell out of a four-story building, slammed into the hardest metal Every fucking shit that HVAC you could. Every system on the outside of the building. And landed on her feet. I didn't know she was Catwoman. Landed Dude, on have, her feet. I have taken my dog for a walk in the winter, <laughs> and she has tripped me, and I landed on a snowbank and still cracked ribs. <laughs> Like I know it's a movie. <laughs> I know it's a movie, but and I also know it's Avengers movie, so they have to like we can't just go like practical and blah blah blah. But Black Widow does not have superpowers in the MCU. Surprise, in the MCU, so like you would, she died technically in this movie like nine times. Her actual superhero ability is that she fucking can't die apparently. She can only die if she says so. Yeah. And she, yeah, it's, it's fucking, there's like a part in the movie where she's like falling, literally just falling through the air, out of space, basically. She jumps from like an, I don't know. Falls uh, into a a space station that is not quite fully in space. And like while falling, falls into a 
helicopter that's also falling through midair bounces around in there a little bit, spits her out the other side, and she's still totally fine. And, and then like, from there, then she uses <laughs> other falling debris to like bounce off of and stabilize yeah. herself. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's, it it made for incredible action sequences, and but it was I, bullshit. I love ScarJo, but it was not a for everything that they put into who her character was in the MCU. Because like in some of the comics, like she gets minor doses of the super soldier serum yeah we have no indication this far in the mcu that she got any of that (laughs) there is a part though uh completely irrelevant to what we're talking about there's a part where they like zoom in on scarjo's butt like while she's walking for like 30 seconds and nick just goes okay disney and i went yeah you fucking assholes that's gross (laughs) <laughs> well while, while your great. right hand was just buried <laughs> buried deep in your pants uh yeah oh no that was just me that's weird hey ladies i'm single uh no um but on oh was, <laughs> was that weird was that weird to do my bad uh i'm keeping it in because i'm keeping options open um no but so we got uh, a lot, a lot for what the character is. Screen time of Taskmaster. Which has been a long time coming because Taskmaster has been a huge foe of the Avengers uh, individually for a long time. Uh, a mimic with photographic memory. So basically you see something once and you know how to fight it basically and uh the big reveal was first off heavily foreshadowed in this film and i'm not even mad about the fact that they made taskmaster a woman i'm not mad about no hell no no. hell no exactly taskmaster could definitely be a woman totally good at that what i'm mad about is that they fucking jammed it down our throats the whole movie to the point where you were like, hmm, I'm pretty sure that Taskmaster is this dude's fucking daughter because they've been fucking dick fucking me in the throat with it the whole movie. <laughs> but also from that, like they throughout the entire film, Taskmaster's shown to have like manly a, not even like a manly body, but just a masculine body. Yeah. Huge. Tall. Like I mean Six. and I I have cousins that tower over me. So it's not even just the tall aspect. It's just the general shape of the body and no no vocals. I think that's part of it, though, is that they're trying to throw us off that it wasn't a female. Yeah, they, they tried because too hard. Because in the comics, Taskmaster is not a female. Right. Yeah. And I'm not mad that they made Taskmaster a female. Because no, it was actually- like I'm totally okay with that. It... If it's they just that the just, way that they did it was if they just felt not super had, forced. It would have yeah. Like throat force. Like if they had just not fucking every like fifteen to twenty minutes in this movie, they're like fucking Dragon Off's daughter. Yeah, I killed this fucking bitch. Oh, I killed this bitch. Oh, I'm so sad because I killed this he bitch. He says bitch, was, but like Black Widow like, was torn up about it, it because it was like a six-year-old. Was like, and then there was this like big reveal where the guy whose daughter that ScarJo killed is like, he's like, hey, show him who you are. And she goes to like take her mask off. And it's like, I already know who this fucking is. And You've it's also fucking- a really weak show of CGI because it's literally like a, a bodybuilder's body with a cgi version of like this girl's head on her and it does and she and she's got like the crazy eyes she's like well i mean she she's a burn victim so like she can't control half of her face so like way to be insensitive do you want to talk about seal while we're at it you want to talk about uh heidi klum's ex-husband um Kinda. yeah 
yeah, I went there. I did. <laughs> no, but it was just that they could have made Taskmaster as a female and made the character so much more dynamic and intriguing and better. But they literally stripped everything from Taskmaster that made Taskmaster who Taskmaster. that character is. You know, they have uh, you know, a photographic memory with a uh, mimetic I say mimetic because I don't know the, the medical term, uh, but mimetic uh, muscle movements. Basically, they can see anything and then yeah. copy it. And, th- and that was kind of that was like kind of the like one of the points that I was like, oh, this is gonna be cool because they were like in the preview they show Taskmaster using a shield like Captain America. They do this like fucking Black Panther. They use a bow and arrow like fucking uh, Hawkeye, and you're like, oh, this is gonna be dope. Literally, those parts in the movie are the only fucking parts that you see Taskmaster using those skills. Yeah, and like, like they showed sweet. Taskmaster watching like fight sequences that have been captured on video, and then they plug a USB into the back of their head. It's like you you took away the the power of Taskmaster. Yeah, like I'm I'm fine with everything else that led up to who Taskmaster is in this. Yeah. What what Chad is saying is that in the comics, Taskmaster can that's his in the no offense in the comics. I, I love that they made it a woman in this movie. I do. I honestly do. I think they executed it poorly, but I like that they did that. It's progressive. I love it. But and it, it, comics, it doesn't take Task- away from the character if they would have done it right. Yeah. That the taskmaster in the comics it his power is that he can watch something or like a person's fighting style and adapt it and become that fighting style in the movie they make it more of a techno technology kind of thing where like she sees it in her fucking suit and it's like robotic or whatever and then she can do it but then like she doesn't actually it, you other it, than it's doing more of like, a, it's more of like uh yeah. you know in uh Captain America Civil War. Yeah. When Tony and Captain are fighting and uh Friday is telling uh Tony Stark, you know, like I've analyzed his fight patterns and he's like, Okay, let's kick his ass. And then the suit kicks his ass instead of Tony. And this movie his literally ass. takes place like six six months or less after yeah. that event. So it, it, like Chad was saying, it really takes away from the character of Taskmaster. We, we like the idea that they went with a female being Taskmaster, but they took away from the character arc, where that it's not and having that ability. Yeah, it's not an ability. It's more of like a, a techno- computer technology how thing. How to do it? Yeah, which was dumb. like, and I'm I'm even okay with like having a computer system be the thing that, you know, like directs them and be like, Hey, this is what they're doing. Cause it kind of shows it from taskmaster's mm-hmm. point of view a couple of times where it shows like the, the computer grid of like the body motion. And it's like, even that would be fine mm-hmm. if they didn't have a scene in the movie where as they're watching fight sequences someone comes up and plugs enough fucking usb into the back of their helmet i also really wanted to see at the end of the movie when uh natasha is like fighting all the brainwashed like fucking girls and like yelena is like running towards them i'm like oh shit the two of them are gonna take on like 20 girls at the same time this is gonna be dope and then fucking yelena just throws like the fucking poof in there and they all get unbrainwashed, and I was like, "Wow, that's fucking dumb." Like I thought it was gonna be like a big ass fight. Like they built up to it, and I was like, "Sweet, this is gonna be dope." They did the same thing when uh, ScarJo defeats Taskmaster. Yeah. The end. Of, the end fight was dumb. They fight for like forty five seconds, and then ScarJo is like, "Poof! Here's your magical mist that makes you unbrainwashed." And that, like, that was the end of the mo- like basically the end of the movie. Yeah. Uh, there's an end credit scene which gives me hope for some cool shit coming for, like 
going forward. Um, sorry, coming forward. Uh, <laughs> wow. Okay. Going, that was going forward. <laughs> graphic. You're disgusting. Uh, you're the one that did it. I did not move my arms <laughs> once, and you're like, ah. Uh, basically, it shows, uh, what's her name? Dreyfus, something Dreyfus. What's her name? <laughs> Louise uh, Dreyfus. Yeah, she basically shows up to the uh, uh, grave site of Natasha because now we're in real time. Natasha's dead. Her sister, Yelena, is there at the, at the grave site. And we see her basically come there and she's like, hey, I know who killed your sister. Here's his picture. And she shows a picture of Clint Barton, uh, a.k.a. Hot Hot guy. guy. Hot guy. Yeah. H-O-T-G-U-Y. It's Uh H-A-W-T-G-U-A-Y. But yeah. Yeah. So And and we kind of know from... um, falcon and winter soldier that she is trying to build her own avengers Avengers. but like bad avengers yeah yeah so elena not necessarily bad but just very politically motivated fighting on the wrong side unknowing what the sokovia accords wanted yeah so we already have wyatt russell who is captain fuckface from no it's u.s agent we can't US keep agent. calling him that because uh yes we fucking can okay fine because she recruited him now so now he's gonna be on the wrong side again and mm. now yelena so we know that don't and then we're gonna get fucking abomination yeah woo-hoo. shang chi i'm so excited about yeah. that um but yeah i think i mean we just wrapped up that was I mean, the end credit scene so i think we wrapped up the yeah the movie I mean, I know that we we talk some negative shit about this film. That's what we do. I have to tell my girlfriend constantly. I'm like, hey, I liked this movie, but like, I talk shit about movies. That's just what I do. Yeah, I pick them apart. And with that though, I I do just want to like circle back because like we both really enjoyed this film. It was really good. It was really good, and the MCU, especially when it comes to superhero films, does it so much better than dc but they can blend you know the touching moments the action the emotional connections as well as just the comedic relief that happens through interpersonal connections and this movie was so good at it like i've already watched it twice i'm definitely on board to watch it again like i really enjoyed this movie there was just some things that as comic nerds that kind of irked us so if you haven't seen it yet and you listen to all of our spoilers first off shame on you uh (laughs) but secondly like enjoy this movie because it is good and it's fun and the graphics are phenomenal and like the interactions between the characters are great it's, it's just that movie. they could have done better by some characters. Yeah. And character development and stuff like that. Uh, with that being said, we have a couple of things that we do want to talk about as we close out this episode. Um, so, yeah, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and start closing out the episode. But before we do, we just want to talk about a couple things, uh, like our Patreon. Um, yeah, so our we have our Patreon page set up. It's how you can get some uh, behind the scenes and extras, kind of like we talked about earlier in this episode. It's literally just www.patreon.com slash allthingsnerdpodcast, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash all things nerd podcast you can also find it in the link below at our link tree where you have a link to literally everything that we do um but on top of that we also have our lives our next live stream coming up uh later this month and jake what is that on shit uh (laughs) (laughs) shit the 23rd friday the 23rd yeah friday july 23rd (laughs) we're gonna be doing another uh live stream uh, a live stream episode um, 
I don't think we've decided on a game yet, but uh, uh, yeah, no. last month uh, we had some really good participation, so we're probably going to do something more along the lines of yeah, yeah, uh, last Q and A and stuff like that for some for some. Of our last giveaways. month was a lot of fun. We had a lot of you guys were um, texting in and asking us questions, which is normally we ask you guys the questions, and then we give giveaways based on that. Uh, and then I, we also both got a lot of feedback from listeners saying that that was a lot of fun and we should do that more often. So, uh, we'll come up with something, but we want to, we, we, yeah. we want this to be something you guys want to listen to and be a part of. Yeah. So we please just give us, tr- we just feedback. try and do something to fill the time, yeah. uh, for you guys. So, you know, we might do another game kind of like what, what we did last month just to kind of fill the gaps instead of doing yeah. a... Because when we do just, a power hour, everyone's more interested in the music. Yeah. Uh, so we might do something else instead of that. Um, also, next week, uh, we will be having uh, one of my uh, good friends and old colleagues from back in the marketing days. Uh, his name is Joe. Uh, he and his friends were the ones who developed the Galactic <clears throat> Battleground arcade game, which can be found in uh, several indie arcades across the country. Uh, it's su- it's a super fun game. Um, but also, he is uh, the host of the Indie Arcade Wave podcast, so he's going to be on next week talking about, you know, kind of like the the underground arcade scene not really underground it's it's growing in popularity but like the arcade scene um across the nation and some indie developers and games that you guys should be looking forward to to playing um i know he has sent me some some super fun games that are just wild and his podcast is always super entertaining so he's going to be on to talk with us about that as well as the loki season finale because he has been watching along with us and he's super eager to talk about it um and then from there uh in two weeks we have our 25th episode coming out what i know that's a quarter of 100 yeah you guys have been listening for six months uh which is wild because uh we never expected to get this far. So for our 25th episode, we're going to be doing something a little bit uh, special for you guys. We're going to be announcing in the next couple of days on our social media accounts. Uh, we haven't fully locked down the stipulations, but it's going to be a... It's going to be a We've got some a, ideas. A we got a vast some, giveaway. Some big giveaways that won't just be like a t-shirt and stuff like that we're, we're no, gonna do we're something gonna cool. do something yeah big for you guys yeah. um and it's gonna be limited to just a couple of people so yeah um be on the lookout for that and it's gonna be fun yeah uh, that me. being said we fucking love you guys thank fucking you love thank you, guys. you thank you for thank you in. thank you thank you for coming watch in. listen <laughs> Listen to this listen. shit. No, I will fucking murder you. <laughs> Fuck. No. Uh, <laughs> we do. We love you guys. Thank you guys so much for listening and watching and all that. Please go check out us on YouTube too because uh, we, as much as we do get uh, a lot of listeners on here, um, YouTube helps too. We just want to spread spread this. Like yeah, and you can and you can see uh, how great Jake looks, and I'm not going to make a comment about that because that's not something to joke about. Um, but Jake looks great. Uh, his beard looks better than mine, which is disappointing. <laughs> I admitted it on my own accord, so <laughs> deal with it. Um, yeah, check us out on YouTube. Uh, obviously, we have our our Patreon, our web store. Um, we're we're starting to post uh, some behind the scenes stuff to our Patreon and you get exclusive merch in uh, different colors that we'll never post to our web store, different variations of stuff that we sell. Uh, yeah. And Jake has just pushed me. So we love you guys. Thank you for blowing our minds and allowing us to do this. Uh, this has been the all things nerd podcast. <laughs>